Okay. Uh, so on Wednesday, we started to look at um, JSON. Um, JSON is a format, a data format for concisely storing um, complex uh, pieces of information, similar to XML. Um, but we're going to look at, uh, we're going to start off looking at today is we're going to um, uh, look at an example of how this is uh, much more clean and efficient um, to, uh, to iterate over the, the results and to uh, extract the information from JSON. Um, as opposed to from XML. So <clears throat> this is an example of uh, the JSON format. Um, the JSON format is a subset of the JavaScript syntax. This is the syntax used in JavaScript to declare an object. Um, and this object can uh, have arbitrarily nested pieces of data inside of it. So we've got an array here, we've got another object here, and so on. Um, so this is a, a concise method of um, basically creating a data structure. Um, uh, so let's see, so if we want to, for example, fetch um, book data, if we have a, a JSON file that contains data about books, um, say we have this file right here, go and open it, books.json, we have this JSON file here containing a list of books. Um, we saw a similar list uh, with uh, XML in, in XML format. Uh, for each, so this is the, the entire thing here is an array. And that encompasses a list of objects. So this is an object, this is an object, and so on. And each object contains key value pairs, the title, author, year, price, and category. Um, so it's fairly straightforward. If we want to load that file, um, actually, why don't we just do this? We'll just uh, we'll just write a quick page here, uh, books.html, my books, and I'm going to create a UL that contains the list of books, id equals bookstore. And I'm going to write out a list of books here. So I'm going to do that with JavaScript. So we'll write books.js, link to our books.js, script, books.js. Uh, and then we'll just do our like window.add listener load function uh, and on when we uh, load the page we want to uh, make an Ajax request to fetch this books.json file this books.json file will then parse into a JavaScript object we'll iterate over the contents of it and for each uh, element there we will um, inject an li into the bookstore so uh, we're going to initiate an AJAX request where xhr equals new xml http request um, xhr dot open books dot json. Oops, let me specify get first books dot json true xhr dot send. Uh, let me specify xhr dot add event listener load inject books. <coughs> Here. Oh, xrh, excellent, xhr. Thank you. Um, inject books. Okay, so uh, in this we're gonna uh, make use of this dot um, uh, response text. This dot response text will contain the JSON code from this books.json file. So basically this will be copied and pasted into a string that is this dot response text, right? So you could say this dot response text equals that string. Except uh, in single quotes. So that's basically what we're doing right there. 
Um, so we'll use this dot response text. We'll parse that as JSON, JSON dot parse. That will return an object, var books. This books is now an array. And this array we can iterate over. We can uh, do a for, a for loop on it. Um, and each element of that is an object. We can get each object's properties and so on. So for var i equals zero, i less than uh, books dot length, i plus plus. Um, we're going to do something with the ith book. So books bracket i. We will uh, want to look at it. Maybe we'll put in like the title and author. We'll just do those. Um, we'll say like title by books i dot author. Um, and we'll put that, so we'll say var text equals that. That's going to be the text that we're going to put into our, um, our new list item element. So we'll create a new list item, var li equals document dot create element li, li dot inner html equals text. Or as we learned, we can do text content as well. So let me go ahead and do that. And then it to, in order to inject this li into the page, we say um, document dot get element by id bookstore dot append child li. So we initiate an Ajax request to load this JSON file. We parse that JSON uh, string into an actual JavaScript object. We iterate over the length of that array. This is actually an array. Um, we iterate over the length of that array for each ith element. We get its title and its year. We compose a string with that, put that inside of an li, and, uh, and append it to uh, the URL. So if we go view that. HTML. Excellent. Um, maybe we want to only filter this list to those um, books that are about computers. So we have category cooking, category computers, category children, and category computers again. So only two out of these four are computing books. We can just go ahead and say, well, if books bracket I dot category is equal to computers, computers or computing, computers, then I'm going to do this stuff. Otherwise, I'm just not going to. There we go. So um, JSON is much quicker and much uh, cleaner and more concise than, uh, than using uh, XML. XML, you have to call DOM functions on it. You have to get DOM objects back, and you have to extract the text from those DOM elements, and then you can uh, put, put stuff on the page. This way, you're just saying, just give me the title. Just give me the author. Um, it's, much, it's much more clean um, and a lot more fun, really. So that's JSON. Um, we're going to come back to that example later today. Um, and we're going to uh, move right into web services. We're going to write a web service um, similar to this books.json.php. In fact, we're going to write this books.json.php. Um, we're going to write this, um, and uh, this web service is going to give us, what we did here was we sort of uh, artificially limited this list to um, uh, only those those uh, that have computers. Well, what if we have a, a big database um, of, uh, of books, and that big database is like, it's maybe in a MySQL database. We don't have direct access to that MySQL database. We're going to have to make a request to the server and ask the server to give us only information about, uh, only books about computing. Um, so we're going to have to send a parameter to a program on the web server, and that program is going to have to make a query to the database. Um, and when it makes a query to the database, it's going to um, uh, 
uh, only fetch those elements that, uh, that have a category of computers, and then it's going to send us the resulting data, send us the resulting JSON. So that, those, are the, those are the steps involved here. We're going um, uh, to write a web service today that will act just like this. When you pass a category in there, it's only going to give us uh, the books uh, under that category. So that's the material for today. Um, so why don't we backtrack for a second. Um, a web service is a program that's set up somewhere on the internet. It's a program like a PHP web service you can contact by making a web request. You pass it parameters to specify what you want it to do, like, you know, like Google has a search web service, right? Google.com slash Google.com slash search. That's our, um, that's the Google uh, web service for search. And if we say search q equals um, uh, black raven, um, it will uh, accept that as a search term, and it will give us um, information about that search. Um, the the difference between this and uh, what we typically consider to be a web service is this: that this outputs HTML code. This outputs a full HTML page. What we consider to be a web service is something that only outputs data. It only outputs data, maybe in XML format or in JSON format, or sometimes it will output HTML, but it'll only output like a snippet of HTML, a small portion of HTML, um, similar to, the, to what we did with, um, with the quotes page. If we go back to the quotes page, um, the, let's see, where was that? That was, we finished that up here. So when we were fetching a quote, um, if we fetch five quotes, for example, um, we get five quotes. And if we look at the HTML here and we look at the, the AJAX request that was made, we're getting back paragraph tags from the AJAX request. Uh, we're going to have to refresh to see this AJAX request. The AJAX request shows up here. We can look at the data that was given to us by this AJAX request. And we can see that uh, this program gave us uh, HTML code. This program gave us some text that happens to contain HTML code. Um, so you could think about this quotes.php. This is the, the service that we were contacting as a web service. This um, accepts parameters, and it outputs data. So that's what a web service is. Um, it's like a, it's it's kind of like a remote function that you can call. It's more like a program that you pass in parameters to. Um, can be written in PHP or in any other server-side programming language. Um, and we've we have uh, several examples of it that we've done this quarter or that we will do this quarter. Um, we're going to be uh, having a redux of the baby names homework assignment. If you're familiar with that one from uh, from 142, right? Uh, we're going to be doing a similar, that's actually going to be our last homework assignment, is uh, a baby names program. Um, and uh, so we're going to be looking at this one today. Actually, we're going to be writing one that does that. Animal Game was also a web service that uh, gave us, if you pass in a node ID, it gave us XML as output, um, and so on. Um, so a web service can output different types of data. By default, the web server is configured to assume that you're going to output HTML code. Um, but in order to communicate to the browser that we're sending a different type of data, we're not sending HTML code, we're sending JSON, or we're sending um, uh, XML, or we're sending plain text. Um, if we just make a, a, a request to a .json file, uh, the web server will know, OK, that's a JSON file. I'm going to communicate to the, the web browser that this is the JSON file. And the way that it does that is it sends what's called a header. The header um, gets sent, actually, if we go back and take a look at the header um, that was sent by, I closed it, 
that was sent by the quotes.php, quotes.php. Um, we can, or let's, let's look at the quotes of HTML. So open up Firebug, take a look at the, so this is the Ajax request that was made. Um, every request involves headers, and headers are sort of, um, when I make the request, when I send my request to the server, in addition to that request, in addition to saying, give me this file, I also send it, uh, my, or the browser also sends it some additional information. It says, well, this is the kind of, 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 of content that I would like to receive. I would like to receive HTML. Um, or if you don't have HTML, I, I'll, I'll also accept H, uh, XHTML or XML, things like that. And these are the kinds of, of content I, I desire. I can't handle any other kinds of content. Um, uh, let's see. This is the page that I was on previously. This is uh, you know, this is called the refer header. Um, if you click a link from one page to the other, the browser sends a refer header that says this is the page that I came from, which is kind of interesting. And then uh, we have this user agent string here that says this is what this is what browser I am. I'm. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm running on OS 10, 10.8. I'm Firefox version 22.0. That's, that's what I am. That's the, the browser that's being used to make this request. So all of these headers are things that, that get sent uh, from the browser to the server. And then the server, in response, also sends some headers. Um, before it actually sends the content of the page, it sends some, some additional sort of meta information. Um, it says, you know, this is the this is how much data I have. This is the number of characters I'm sending you. Um, this is the type of content that I'm sending you, which is uh, it says text plain. Actually, that's wrong um, because it is actually sending us HTML code. Um, we uh, we should interpret it as, uh, as HTML code. So maybe we'll just fix that real quick. Um, in our, I'll copy this over. 19, copy this over to this one, and then we'll edit it there, quotes.php. So um, what we originally had it doing was uh, outputting different quotes uh, just in plain text, but I edited it to add this HTML code here. So technically what this header should say is um, text HTML. Um, so it, it should communicate to the browser that I'm sending uh, HTML code. Um, you can actually just omit this if you want because the, the web server is configured to send this automatically. So you don't have to send it. But we'll just be explicit about it. So um, if we make a new request, now it's going to give us... Oh, uh, we forgot to switch directories here. 21 um, web services. Now it's going to give us a content type of text HTML. And that just tells the browser this is what type of content I'm sending. Um, so um, headers are, are a useful way that, that um, the server communicates with the browser and vice versa. Um, if you want to output content in plain text, um, actually, so if we go back to that web service, quotes.php, we make a request to it. Um, now you'll notice that the page count equals three. The page is sort of rendered in a, uh, um, a proportional width font, a sans serif font. Um, if we go back and change that back to plain, then the browser interprets this as just plain text. It doesn't interpret the HTML code. So if we send text plain, it will just output the literal characters and it shows, us, shows it to us in like a monospaced font. But if we tell the browser that we're sending HTML code, it will actually interpret that HTML code um, and put these things into paragraphs. Um, so this is that's how the the browser handles these uh, these differences. Um, there are several different types. There's text plain, um, text HTML, XML, application JSON. This is the header for JSON. 
um, and so on. There are lots of different uh, mime types. Actually, they, they changed the name of this. It's no longer called mime types. It's actually, it's, technically, it's called internet media types now. Um, so as an example, uh, let's write a web service real quick that takes a base and an exponent and raises this base to this exponent and then outputs the result. So let's go ahead and create that exponent. Exponent, we'll write um, exponent.php. This will be a PHP script. And this will output just a number, okay? just a number. This is going to be the data that's going to be uh, received by the program. Maybe we have some JavaScript code, some client-side JavaScript code that's going to make an AJAX request to this. Maybe we enter you know, a base in a field, and we enter an exponent in a field, and we click Calculate. And maybe we don't want to do that with JavaScript, which we could. Um, instead, we want to make an AJAX request to the server and have this exponent.php uh, program calculate it for us and then send us the result. Um, so what we will do is we will accept two parameters. So let's see, base equals get base and exponent equals get exponent. So this is, uh, remember this is the way that we fetch uh, query parameters, query parameters that are sent to this PHP script get put in this get associative array. And we uh, get the value uh, by passing in the name of it. Um, and we can just calculate, I believe it's POW in, uh, in PHP. So we say base exponent raises the base to the exponent power and then returns the result. Okay. Um, now we just want to output the result to, uh, to the browser. So basically we just want to say like print result. Um, exponent.php. Um, it's going to give me errors because I haven't passed any parameters in. So if I say base equals um, 5 and exponent equals 3, then it gives us the answer 125. Um, so strictly speaking, this is an HTML code. This doesn't have any HTML in it. So technically what we should do is we should send a header to the browser that indicates this is just plain text. So header content type text plain. And now the browser will interpret this as plain text. And one of the things that it does is it renders plain text in the monospace font. Okay, uh, another exercise, uh, baby name web service. So we're going to be writing the web service that you're going to be using uh, later on at, on your next homework assignment. So we have a text file here, rank.txt. This is a text file listing all of the ranks uh, for every decade um, for the past uh, 100 years or so. Um, the gender of the name and, uh, and its ranking. Uh, I think I think there are multiple entries. So I think um, like Morgan, for example, has multiple entries. There's an entry for female uh, for name naming as a female, an entry for naming as a male. Um, so why don't we go ahead and save this? We're going to save this in our sample folder here. Baby names rank.txt. And we're going to read through this file in our web service, and we're going to write the web service babynames.php to accept a name and a gender. And we'll read through the file, find the name, find the line with line that begins with that name and also has that gender. And we're going to output um, just the entire line. Um, so let's do that one. Web 
services baby names baby names .php. So we're going to accept two parameters um, name equals get name gender equals get gender. Um, now we'll read in, um, let's see, we'll read rank.txt. So uh, there are two different ways we can do this. Why don't we do this using the file method instead of the file get contents? Uh, do you remember what the difference is between file and file get contents? File returns an array, and we can just iterate over that array directly. If we if we used file get contents, then we'd have to explode it on like newline, right? So that's just an extra step that we can avoid by just using file. So file rank.txt, um, and I'm just going to uh, strip off the new lines at the end of that by saying file ignore new lines. Put that into um, names. Okay. Yeah. You can't. Uh, for for if you want to use regular expressions, you'd have to use preg uh, explode uh, preg uh, split. Yeah, that's the function to use. Uh, so for each names as line, we will check to see if the first. Let's see if then if the name is first and the gender is second. Um, in order to do that, why don't we use a regular expression to do that? Um, yeah, let's use a regular expression to do that. So if preg match, um, let's see. So we want to indicate the start of the line and then followed by the name and then a space and then the gender. Right, that's what we're, we're going to be searching for. We're going to be searching for the name followed by a space followed by the gender at the beginning of the line. So if the line matches that regular expression, oh, uh, comma line, if the line matches that expression, then we will just output it, print line. Um, Again, because this is plain text, this is not any particular data format, it's not in HTML, we're going to output a header. Header content type text length. Okay. Baby names, baby names.txt. Again, we get errors because we haven't passed in any parameters. So name equals Morgan and gender equals M. Those are the ranks for male. Switch that to F. Those are the ranks for female. So apparently it only became popular to name Morgan as a female um, in what was this, like 1980s or something, um, 70s. Um, of course, what we could do is we could expand this example if we want to. So this outputs just a line. What if we, uh, okay, well, let's let's handle the errors first. Um, so if we don't pass those parameters, we don't want to see those, those, uh, those PHP errors. Maybe you want to communicate to the, the client that they made a bad request, that you need to pass these parameters in order for me to work. Um, so if they pass a gender but not a name, or maybe if they pass a, um, a name that isn't found, uh, then we want to tell the client that this is sort of an error state. We want to communicate an error to the client. Uh, in order to report errors, we've seen a couple of these so far, but the web, web services um, communicate error messages by means of a status code. The status code of 200 means this is the data you requested, this is a successful request, but anything else means that this is an unsuccessful request. A 400 means your request was bad, um, maybe you passed the wrong parameters or forgot parameters or whatever, um, so you need to fix your request in order for me to give you the data that you requested. Um, let's see, 404, not found, 
500 internal server error. That means I made, you know, something is wrong on the server's end. Something, uh, I, I made a mistake somewhere. Um, there's a bug or something. Um, so if we communicate, let's see. So maybe in the case that they send, a, that they send a gender but not a name or vice versa, we can send um, a 400 error that indicates that they made a bad request that they need to correct it. But then maybe if they send a name that isn't in the list, we can indicate that that name isn't in the list by sending a 404 error. Um, so why don't we do both of that, both of those? Um, this is an example of doing that. So if we if we have a parameter here foo and its value is not bar and we're, we're looking for the value bar, the, the, the parameter foo can only be bar, then we'll die with a header of this. So this is another thing that we can send with a header. This is the initial response. Um, by default the initial response is HTTP 1.1 200 OK, but we can change this if we want and send uh, uh, a, an error status. And then oftentimes what we do after that is we die. We just say, I'm blowing up. Um, this is the message that I'm going to output that indicates I can't continue, that I can't proceed. Um, or like maybe the file doesn't exist um, that we need to be able to read. And so we'll say 404 file not found. Um, actually, in this example, what I'd probably do is I'd probably say, um, oh, uh, so if this is like a variable that the the client supplied, then yeah, I might say 404 file not found. But if this is a variable that like I'm using internally, then I probably wouldn't use a 404. I'd probably use a 500. But um, at any rate, so uh, this is an example of checking for query parameters to ensure that they're passed. Uh, we can write a function that will do this for us. If we uh, specify the name of the parameter, we can check to see if that parameter is set. If it's not set, We'll output an invalid request. If it is set, or uh, sorry, if it's empty, then we'll output a different message. We'll say so uh, missing required parameter. If it's if it's set but it's empty, then we'll output a, a different message that says it must be non-empty. Otherwise, we'll just return it. So in this function, we can just use this function rather than saying you know. Uh, dollar sign name equals get name. We can say dollar sign name equals get query param name, and it'll automatically check that that parameter, the value passed for that parameter, is is valid. And then it'll, uh, it, assuming it is, it'll give it to us. So why don't we just uh, write that function there? Um, get query param. Function get query param, um, param name. Um, and if we want to, oops, it always falls out of my back pocket. going in the front pocket now. Um, so uh, get query parameter. So it, uh, we can call this function here. Instead of get, we can say get query param name. And same thing for gender. To all the variables that are passed? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, but well, it, in this case, we're so we're we want to we want to get the the particular value of the name, and as we're doing that, we're going to ensure that this this name parameter is, was passed. So we could do it. We could do it a couple different ways. We could actually just iterate over all the parameters that we expect at the beginning. We could say for each dollar sign get as uh, name arrow value. Um, and we could say if not um, 
uh, actually no, what we'd want to do is we'd say array um, name gender as param name. If not is set get param name. So this is this is a different way we can do it. We can validate in advance, and then uh, down here, we're just free to say get blah blah blah. Or get blah blah blah. Uh, so if it's not set, then we can say um, uh, actually yeah. Let's do it this way. This is the way that I prefer to do it. So function. Um, I like to write a function called HTTP die. Um, that accepts a parameter that's a code to output a um, uh, status and a message. And what this will do is this will send a header, header HTTP slash 1.1 code. So the code will be like 400 or 404 or 500 or something. Status is the, the message, the sort of like the text description of that, like not found or okay or um, internal server error. So we do that. Then we say die with this message. I like to have a function like that. Um, so then we can say if the parameter is not set, then we can say HTTP die uh, 400 invalid request. And the message we're going to send is um, you need to pass a uh, param name parameter. Else, if so, we've eliminated. We've uh, we've determined that it is set. We can check to see if get param name is empty, is the empty string, then in that case we'll output a different message. We'll say 400 invalid request, the parameter param name must not be empty. Responsibility to establish you know, each error message and show, and show that? Yes. So uh, a good web service will always, always produce errors if any invalid request is made. And you have to anticipate that, that uh, invalid requests might be made. So at the beginning, you're always going to have to validate the parameters that are passed to ensure that the correct parameters are passed, good values are passed. Um, that's something that you're always going to have to do for every web service you design. Um, and what, basically what it, what it boils down to is ensuring that the required parameters are passed and that they meet some sort of validation. Um, and then uh, you might also additionally um, sort of like determine whether they've passed additional parameters that are not used. Maybe they just passed a parameter called foo and your, your web service doesn't use a parameter called foo. You might additionally uh, generate an error in that case and say, you passed a parameter foo that I don't understand. I don't, I don't accept the parameter foo and I'll error in that case as well. So um, yeah, robust error checking is a really important part of designing a web service. Um, okay, so we've determined that those parameters are passed um, once we reach this point. If, we, um, if any parameter is invalid, then we're going to die. Um, die exits the, the program immediately, so we will never get to this point uh, if the valid parameters are not passed. So we'll just say dollar sign underscore get. Oops, uh, bracket. Okay. And then from this point on, we can be ensure we can be assured. Let's move this uh, header up here to the top of the page, so that if we die with an error message, that uh, that will also be output in plain text. 
undefined variable param name for each array as param name. There we go. Okay. So if we pass a parameter of Morgan and we don't pass a gender parameter, it says you need to pass a gender parameter. If we pass a gender equals f, but we don't pass a name, it says you need to pass a name parameter. Um, if we do this, if we say gender equals empty string, um, it'll still say we have to pass a name parameter. It's not going to. It's not going to sort of. That's that's the first thing that we do. We check to to make sure the parameter exists. Um, so let's say name equals Morgan and gender equals, and it says gender must not be empty. Okay. Um, the last thing we want to do is we want to ensure that the uh, the file is found, or sorry, the um, the uh, the the line is found with that name on it. So if we print the line, maybe what we can do is we can exit here. Once we find the line, we can print it. Otherwise, if we get through this loop, we haven't exited yet. Once we found uh, the line that we're looking for. We can HTTP die um, with a, an error code of 404, name not found. Actually, we'll just do not found. Not found. The message will be the name, name was not uh, with the gender, gender was not found. So we can say um, maybe Andrew, the gender of female. I don't think that uh, that's a very common thing. Um, or we can say Borat with the gender of male. The name Borat with the gender of male is not found. Um, so this is uh, this is how we output error messages. Um, let's um, if we go and look at the um, the request that was made. So uh, if if we're writing a, a client program that's making a request to this web service, we can see that it's going to be returning this error status. And in our AJAX request, in our, in our JavaScript code for our AJAX request, we can determine that you know the, the four of, it was a 404 status and not a 200 status. And you can handle that differently. But the response is just like, it's just plain text. This is the response. Um, if, uh, if the name is found, then we can see that the response is 200 OK. And the response is just this you know, line. Um, that uh, that would be a great extra feature, I, I think. Um, if you like pass in the wrong gender, you could you know try to do some kind of auto correction kind of thing. Um, that would be a great extra feature. Um, it's not something that's definitely not something that's required for the project, um, and doing that can be really difficult sometimes, especially for Google. It's it's uh, well maybe not super difficult, but um, that that's something that that's non-trivial to to try and uh, uh, find uh, corrections um, uh, to to try and, and and make a suggestion for something that. Uh, that you might have meant. That's uh, that's pretty non-trivial to do. Um, yeah, and so you're not required to do that for your homework assignment for sure. Okay, um, uh, we we took a look at the server super global array at, uh, a little bit previously. Um, we'll take a look at a couple more elements of this. Um, we we specifically looked at the request method. Um, we were able to look at the request method to see wh whether it was get or post. 
to determine how to respond, um, whether we should respond with, um, or sorry, uh, we looked at this specifically with respect to self-submitting forms. So when we initially load the page, it's using a GET request. We output the form. And when the user fills out the form and hits submit, um, it submits back to the same page, back to the same PHP script, but using a POST request instead, in which case we would go into like the ELSE block or something. So this is, uh, that's a, a very useful method. Uh, you can use this method in, um, in web services to determine whether you've been getted to or posted to. Um, uh, you can also determine like the remote user's IP address and um, their user agent and things like that. Some, some, some of these are sometimes useful. I think the request method is the one that I use the most. Um, so you can differentiate between a get request and a post request this way and if else block. Um, we've already sort of done this. We've uh, already emitted uh, a sort of an HTML snippet, um, a portion of HTML on the page um, uh, from a web service, from our quotes.php web service. It emitted some paragraphs. Um, this is another example of doing that. We're not outputting the entire HTML page. We're not outputting the doc type or the head or the, the body tag or the HTML tag. We're just outputting some HTML that's going to end up being injected into the page using JavaScript. Uh, we can also, if we wanted to, uh, we can modify our babynames.php service to produce output as XML. Um, in that case, we just basically have to parse this line, uh, extract the name, extract the gender from it, and then extract all the ranks. Um, and uh, I mean, it's, it's fairly straightforward. All you got to do is output an XML prologue, um, output some tags, and inject the content into the tags. Just like outputting X, uh, HTML, um, except you're just outputting uh, XML tags instead. Um, it, it can be difficult to do this sometimes. Um, obviously, we don't want to print a whole lot. Um, we don't want to you know, print tags, just like with HTML. Um, we do want to, uh, let's see, there's an example of this. Ah, OK. So this example um, creates elements just like we do in JavaScript. So we're uh, actually, so the DOM, uh, the idea of the DOM is actually fairly portable. It doesn't exist only in JavaScript. It can exist in other programming languages. So in this case, what we're, uh, in order to output XML, we're creating a new DOM document object here. And in this, in this uh, DOM document, we're creating a new element, a books element. This is the books tag. We're going to append a child. Uh, we're going to append uh, the books tag to the document. And then for each book, we're going to create a new book element, set its title and author attribute and append that book to the books tag. The books tag is the global uh, books tag. So we're, we're basically doing with PHP the exact same thing that we do with JavaScript. Calling the same methods, create element, append child, set attribute, um, but we're using it to generate an XML document instead. Um, the other thing that we could do is we could actually just manually output uh, tags, just like we do with, uh, let's just copy this over, just like we do with HTML. So, so rather than printing the line, why don't we say um, output uh, line, XML line, and we'll have a function down here called output XML, function output XML line, we can split this line up, um, and we can say books for each books as book, Expression block, a 
all the stuff that we're used to using um, in HTML when we output stuff in HTML. And then we finish up with the closing books tag and open the PHP block again. So this is another approach to outputting uh, XML. Uh, one thing that we do usually have to do is we actually, oftentimes we do have to print this XML prologue. This is something that uh, it can be a little bit uh, um, ugly, obviously. We, we don't usually want to do this because we have to escape you know, these and, and so on. Um, but the reason for this is that if we just say something like this, XML version equals 1.0, blah, blah, blah. Uh, PHP will see this and be like, oh, OK, it's PHP code. Oh, what's XML? I don't understand that. Um, so PHP will often misinterpret this line. Um, it'll try to interpret as PHP code. So to avoid that, we usually print this XML prologue manually inside of, uh, inside of the PHP block. OK. So um, this uh, DOM element, um, you, you basically use exactly the same way as we use the, the JavaScript DOM. Um, you can also output stuff using JSON instead. Um, JSON is a lot, uh, a lot more fun, I think. Um, but again, rather than manually outputting, you know, curlies and like the name uh, keys, key value pairs, and like actually manually developing a string for this. Uh, the better way is to create an object in JavaScript, or sorry, in PHP, and then run it through this function JSON encode. JSON encode turns that object into a JSON string, and we just print that. So why don't we adapt this again? So this we have a function output XML. Let's uh, have another function um, output JSON. output JSON. So we'll take the line and we're going to output, instead of um, uh, text XML, we're going to say application JSON. Don't need this header here. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to declare an array. We'll say um, uh, name equals an array. And we'll say um, Oh, actually, we're outputting name, so uh, we'll say like name. I don't know. I'll I'll, I'll fix this later. I can uh, adapt this to a names example. Um, name. Uh, if we output the name, we want to um, here we go. So name, Morgan, gender, male, rankings, uh, and then that would be an array. So name. Let's say list, name, gender, no. Uh, let's split this up into parts, tokens, equals um, explode line on a space. Uh, we can say name equals array shift to remove it from the beginning, array shift, and then gender equals array shift. And then from that point on, the, um, the ranks is the remainder of the tokens. tokens. So we can say name equals name, gender, gender, and then uh, rankings, rankings, rankings. Okay, so we're creating a data structure here. Um, maybe we'll call this output. 
call it name. So output equals this array structure, a key, a value, key, a value, a key, and this is this happens to be an array as a value. Then what all we have to do is say print JSON encode output. Um, in order to test these two outputs, let's um, let's add an additional parameter. Um, we'll say type equals, uh, and we'll say is set get type question mark. If it is, then we'll say get type. Otherwise, we'll default to say um, JSON. Um, so we'll, we'll, we're making the type op uh, parameter optional, um, and here we can say if type equals XML, output XML, else if type equals JSON, output JSON, and so on. Um, so let's pass that as a parameter. This is uh, baby names. Baby names.php, parser line 41. Fix that real quick. One. Pass a name, name equals Morgan, gender equals male. So, uh, shift line, or sorry, tokens, tokens, there we go. Uh, so we're defaulting to JSON, we're outputting, um, okay, so the name is not, name and gender are not coming across, I'll just fix that. But if we wanted to uh, output XML, we just say type equals XML, and we uh, output the XML format. Instead, um, I'll fix this up and uh, post the, the, the cleaned up solution on the, uh, on the course website. Have a good weekend, and I'll see you on Monday.